in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. All passes, art alone enduring, stays to us. Austin Dobson Priya Sishadri Bits of sponge, clumps of modelling clay, wire, canvas and bottles of paint surround an unusual artist as she works with total concentration on her remarkable landscapes. Priya Sishadri has to work through feel and imagination as she is totally blind. Born with congenital corneal dystrophy, Priya could distinguish between night and day until the age of six years. She was brought up in a joint family and her early recollections are of happy interaction between cousins, climbing trees and outings with parents, aunts and uncles. She also remembers acutely the fearful smell of hospitals and the painful eye operations she had to undergo in an effort by her parents to stem the malaise that darkened their daughter's world. Priya has always been nature's child. The sound of the waves at sea, the crunch of sun-roasted leaves underfoot and the burble of pigeons roosting in the rafters have unfailingly caught her attention and uplifted her soul. Priya's family jointly helped her with different aspects of her life. While her mother lovingly assisted her with mobility and with making her independent, her gentle father provided security and attended to matters concerning her admissions and other related activities. Her sister was her pal, reader and helper with schoolwork. Priya always had a passion for reading and so in the early years her friends and family energetically read to her. And later, when the scanner became available to her, she was able to retreat into storyland at will. It was through her varied readings and from the word pictures her family painted that Priya formed her perception of nature. She heard and read in vivid detail descriptions of amethyst afternoons which changed to sunsets of apricot silk the verdant velvet of the close-cropped turf in the park, the glory of the crescent moon hanging in the night sky, and the feathery treetops dressed in bright green new leaves. She listened and experienced all this acutely and let her imagination take wing. Always a student of regular school and college, when she was 12 years old, Priya participated in a small workshop for the blind. She was fascinated to learn about shapes and colours through clay modelling and other tactile techniques. This was the beginning of the artist's life. Once she began, Priya never allowed anything to interrupt the flow of her art. Always a good student and fortified with audio tapes, reading services from volunteers and using scribes to write her exams, Priya sailed through her exams at school. And while she did face disappointments at certain times due to the inability of others to handle her physical impairment, she realized soon enough that it was not a personal assault. At NAB Karnataka branch, Bangalore, Priya, who was already quite adept at using the computer, did a course conducted by NIIT. This opened up the world of knowledge and entertainment for her through the internet. She uses a screen reading software and a scanner for reading printed materials. Priya completed her postgraduate diploma in public relations from Bharti Vidya Bhavan, Bangalore and her MA in English Literature from Bangalore University. She then worked briefly as a lecturer in English at the University of Bangalore on a temporary post before joining the Canara Bank, where she has a secure and fulfilling job. 
All through, despite her different activities, the gift of art, like a cord of grace, remained strongly interwoven in her life. And even while she won first prize as a navigator in a car rally for the blind organized by the Karnataka Motor Sports Association and went mountaineering into the Himalayas, Priya always communed with nature, not through physical vision, but through her own special mental perception. She evolved a unique method of painting using tactile images. All my paint bottles are labelled in Braille, she explains. I plan the layout of the canvas with metal wire and then paint by feel. If, for example, she is painting a mountain, she outlines the shape with the wire and paints within the boundary through touch. If she is working on paper, Priya embosses the shape she requires by pressing the wire onto the page from behind and then works the paint into the embossed outline. For background, Priya usually uses a sponge to create an even wash. She uses modeling clay and other techniques too to create the wonders of nature and of course each painting is unique and different and Priya feels possessive of her work. I don't like to sell it or give it away, she says. Each picture is one of its kind and cannot be repeated. It was while she was participating in a workshop at Bal Bhavan in Bangalore that Priya got a lot of media attention and her work was chosen by Very Special Arts India to be displayed at an exhibition at the Lalit Kala Academy, New Delhi. The same organization then selected her to represent India at the International Arts Festival at Brussels. Physically challenged artists from 80 other countries participated in this exhibition and Priya was the only visually impaired participant from India. She demonstrated her skill and techniques and won considerable acclaim. Priya enjoyed the beautiful city of Brussels but she was there only for 10 days. Back home and ever mindful of helping the visually impaired, she coordinates and encourages blind people to paint and was a volunteer counsellor for Helping Hand, an NGO in Bangalore. Priya was awarded the prestigious Neelam Kanga Prize in 2003 for being the first visually impaired woman to go this far in the medium of painting. Quite unknown to her, while Priya was going about leading her independent, happy life full of personal fulfillment and planning for the future, she was being observed and admired by Dinesh, her neighbour and future husband. After the initial shock of his proposal and when she got to know him better, Priya decided that Dinesh, with his intelligence, open-mindedness and excellent attitude towards life, would be a good and gentle partner for her. Five years ago, the computer software engineer married the visually impaired artist and today they are expecting their first child. So Priya's life has taken a turn she least expected. She has created a fine balance between her professional aspirations and her personal life, which is rewarding, precious, and eagerly awaits a new dawn. Kusum Naik Home Teacher Come Social Case Worker National Association for the Blind, Bombay Kusum always wanted to be a doctor. Her favorite subjects were science and maths. Coming from a well-to-do, Highly educated family, Kusum had a brilliant school career. But disastrously for her, her eyesight was weak. As it became weaker, she gave up her cherished ideal and in 1959 did her B.Sc. with botany, chemistry and geography as her main subjects. Even her desire to get through her M.Sc. with botany had to be dropped as it required considerable microscopic observation. Finally, she passed her M.Sc. with geography as a special subject. Kusum was jubilant when, having done her M.Sc., she found a job as a school teacher in the Kanya Shala at Satara. Four months later, 
tragedy struck. She got an attack of glaucoma and through wrong diagnosis completely lost her vision. Then followed an unhappy painful period of intense frustration and acute depression. But life must go on. Gradually she began to reach out of herself. She started teaching mathematics to the SSC students of that area. She had always been fond of teaching and had an inclination for social service. At this time she developed was jubilant when friendship with Sulaba Ugly, a friendship that has come to mean something very precious. Sulma comes from a well-to-do family with plenty of leisure on her hands and a great admiration for her better educated friend. She has become her constant guide and escort. Kusum picked up more and more confidence. Hope once again entered her life when she heard about the existence of the National Association for the Blind. She learnt Braille, underwent a rehabilitation course, and trained as home teacher cum social case worker, in which capacity the National Association for the Blind appointed her on its staff in 1969. In 1972 Kusum got a scholarship from the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind for further training in the UK. A home teacher according to Kusum, deals with cases coming from different social, mental, financial and educational backgrounds and with people of varying ages. She is the link between the blind and the institutions for the blind. She has to teach them to accept and adjust to their limitations. All this entails a genuine interest on her part. It also means considerable field work and Kusum has to travel extensively for the purpose. This she is able to do with the help of her friend. Says Kusum, I like my job very much. Through it I am able to render useful service to humanity and get peace of mind. A quiet, reserved girl, she is a voracious reader and writes frequently in newspapers. She has a special fondness for all religious literature. She never misses reading a chapter from the Bhagavad Gita every night. As the time progresses she applied herself for meditation where with the guidance of her guru. She developed her skills to be a good pressure. She was able to reach the group of disciples at the ashrams. In 1981 she resigned the job of a social worker and counsellor with NAB India and devoted her life to the meditation in the ashrams. Before that she had successfully counselled thousands of blind persons and promoted their socio-economic rehabilitation. After her resignation she went behind the curtains and nobody from the disability sector could trace her thereafter. Gracie Shroff Telephone Operator Come Receptionist Workshop for the Blind, Bombay Gracie is smart miniskirt and makeup. Gracie is efficient fingers flying deftly over the switchboard, but above all, Gracie is courageous. Life for her has been a grim struggle against adverse circumstances, which she has met boldly. Born 37 years ago in a Jewish home, a premature baby with sore eyes, she lost her sight completely by the time she was seven, due to faulty treatment. Overprotected by her highly orthodox parents, Gracie was kept at home. She shaved against an activity. She desperately wanted to go to school to mix with youngsters her age, to laugh and play. An exuberant child, her helplessness drove her twice to the point of suicide. At last in her teens, with the barest smattering of an education, acquired through stubborn persistence, she joined the Victoria Memorial School for the Blind, Bombay, where she learned Braille and physiotherapy. She attended the G.T. hospital for her practical training and took up a part-time job treating private patients for massage and physiotherapy. But such patients were few and far between, even though she gave complete satisfaction. Doctors were reluctant to recommend her just because she was blind. What is more, she was expected to do the work for lesser pay if she was to get any work at all. Looking round for something else to do, Gracie learned telephone operating at the Hindustan Spinning and Weaving Mills, Bombay. She soon became expert at it and was employed by the Workshop for the Blind, Bombay, as its receptionist come operator, a post which she is holding to this day. 
She is proud of the fact that she has been awarded the Naseo Merit Certificate for being an outstanding handicapped employee in Maharashtra for the year 1974. She is also proud that she has trained many blind persons to operate the switchboard, all of whom are now standing on their own feet. One of the trainees later became her husband. Vasant Shroff who was partially blind has unfortunately now became totally so. Vasant and Gracie live on their own. Gracie looks after their little home completely cleaning, washing, ironing, and cooking, yes cooking absolutely independently. She can turn up a chicken curry or a tasty pulav in a trice. How happy she is at last to have obtained a gas connection which had been refused her earlier, on the plea that it would be dangerous fourth blind to handle. But Gracie can take all things in her stride. She keeps her house spike and span she is fussy about dirt. She keeps herself neat and well-dressed. Applies her makeup herself and takes an eager interest in things around her. She loves to see movies and the tea, we dot. She has a low pleasant voice and is good at light music, and she always wears a smile. Shanta Vadyar Master of Social Work Bombay University, Bombay For pretty, 25-year-old, umber-eyed Shanta Vadyar, life began in darkness. With great reluctance and much heartbreak her parents sent her to the Dadar School for the Blind, Bombay, when she was just five years old. They could not keep her with them, as her father was an IF officer liable to frequent transfers which would upset her education. A clever child, quick at her lessons, she easily passed her SSC and went on to graduate from the Chandibai Himatlal Mansukhani College, Ulhasnagar, in 1972. With the active encouragement of Ms. Nama Azgaokar, her former principal, Mr. Sorab Khan, a prominent social worker of Bombay, and her father, Shanta then decided to enter a field as yet untouched by the blind. She joined Nirmala Niketan, College of Social Work, and in 1974 obtained a master's degree in social work, the first ever blind student in India to do so. The two years at Nirmala Niketan she counts as the best and happiest of her life. Her spontaneous acceptance by faculty members and students helped instill confidence into a basically shy person and this was further built up when she dealt with the necessary casework, group work and community organization. Her knowledge also widened with the study of such subjects as Indian social problems, human growth, mental hygiene, research and statistics. No wonder then, she was quickly absorbed by the National Association for the Blind as a research assistant for their project, facilities available to blind and orthopedically handicapped students in colleges of Bombay City and surrounding areas. For this work, Shanta had to gather material and collect data by interviewing handicapped students, college principals and professors she had to prepare questionnaires, analyze the collected data with the help of tabulations, and finally write the report and recommendations. This was a challenging task which she performed ably. She is out to prove that a blind person, and a girl at that, can with courage and determination do just about anything. And that goes for daily life too. She is completely independent both at work and at home and dreams of a marriage where she will fully pull her own weight and show that a handicapped wife is every bit as good as another. Says, Shanta Shaili, like any other young girl, I too would like to marry a nice, educated young man, whom I would love, and have a small family and home of my own. She married with Mr. Narsinghan a government officer, and happily settled in Mulund, Mumbai. After the marriage she had no interest in getting a permanent job. She continued to be with blind women and she encouraged hundreds of them to achieve better settlement in their lives. She established appreciable personal rapport with blind persons. She was elected as an honorary secretary of Blind Persons Association. During her tenure she had good relationship with the needy and poor blind specially hawkers. Many social working groups tried to nominate her for getting prestigious awards. She expressed her inability to be nominated in the polite words. 
She is continually working for the empowerment of blind women and taking care of her sweet family. Dr. Usha Bhalera Research student, Vikram University, Ujjain Is it true? She asked her mother. There is anything wrong with my eyes? Little Usha had no idea what it was to see, for Trakuma had felt her blind when she was only 18 months old. Like her other friends, she also wanted to learn and through sheer persistence, she was admitted to a primary school. But two years later, a new headmaster refused to let her continue. Despair filled her heart and she wept at her helplessness. She stayed at home, learned to cook and look after the house, and she took music lessons at which she showed herself highly proficient. Some years later, hope dawned ed on the horizon when Mr. Razdan, an elderly social worker, advised her to learn Braille. Usha's father secured a Braille book from Bombay, a valley grows up. Nobody knew Braille in Ujjain at that time. But by comparing the imprint matter on the title page with the corresponding Braille matter, her father, a college professor, decoded the Braille notations and symbols. Later on he secured a book of Braille contractions and abbreviations from Dehradun. He taught Usha whatever he picked up, and in this way the girl learnt English and Bharati Braille within a year. Says his daughter affectionately, he is my father, writer, reader, guide, escort, and my walking encyclopedia. Together they transcribed into Braille all the prescribed texts she needed throughout her academic career, and these are now being used by other blind students in the universities of Madhya Pradesh. With scholarships given by the central government and the Natayonal Association for the Blind, Usha graduated from the Government Girls College, Ujjain, and obtained her MA degree in sociology from the Sandipani College. She was awarded a gold medal by the Madhya Pradesh Blind Welfare Association for being the first blind lady graduate from that state. For her PhD degree, Usha planned a sociological survey of the educated blind of Madhya Pradesh. She worked on it for three years, interviewing 100 educated blind persons and preparing a schedule of 108 questions. She was granted a research fellowship by the University Grants Commission and she obtained her PhD degree from Vikram University in July 1976 at a specially convened convocation. Whilst giving the finishing touches to her thesis, Usha was overjoyed to learn that she had been selected by the National Federation of the Blind as the sole Indian representative to the International Blind Women's Conference 1975 at Belgrade, Yugoslavia. With us four, zero 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 generously awarded to her towards air fare by the Madhya Pradesh government at a public function, Usha travelled alone to Belgrade, changing planes twice at Rome and Cairo. Each time she was helped by staff members of the Indian embassies at all places. At the conference there were 110 delegates from 65 countries. Usha read a paper on the condition of blind women in India. She also visited institutions for the blind at Belgrade and Cairo. For Usha Bhalerav, it is a dream come true, a vindication of a courageous spirit that refuses to be crushed. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India